God's standards are so high that the natural carnal mind cannot hit. It takes the man of the spirit to utilize the things of the spirit. Manifestation awaits you after this message. You are a man of God connected or you are a man of God here. You, you must cry for over the work God has given you. I will not labor in vain. No. No. Are we together? You are a businessman. You've been working hard from January till now. There's nothing to show for it. Doors will look like they will open and then they will not open. The question is who is behind who is closing that door? No door closes on its own. Someone is closing it. Even if it's an invisible hand. Like I would always say, there are many of you who need divine intervention over your career and your life. You are gifted, you are blessed, but the nations cannot hear you. Because every time you attempt to rise, according to Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18, there are horns. These are, these are spiritual forces. Verse 19 says, these are the horns that have scattered Judah. Judah means your praise. Israel means your promise. And Jerusalem means your peace. These are the horns that have risen. They targeted specific areas. Your praise, your testimony, your covenant, your promise, and your peace. They will not allow the word of God to come to pass. But the Bible says in verse 20, gave perspective to that again. It says the Lord showed me four carpenters. And then verse 21, he said, these are the horns that have scattered Judah. Watch this. So that no, no man did lift up his head. That means they tried. What is it about the music ministry that I cannot rise? But these horns have vowed. In your rising is the salvation of many. In your rising will also be your reward. And other people connected to you will eat from your rising. Many of you don't know how wicked Satan is. You think he's conditionally wicked. He's the epitome of wickedness. He will kill anything that must be killed. He does not mind if your children die. If you think Satan will reconsider your case, wake up. I've always marveled at the shamelessness of Satan, how he came and stood before Jesus. Forgot that he was thrown down from heaven and stood confidently before Jesus and made that statement. All the proposals he made, Satan is that shameless. He will afflict you and come back. You will cast him out and he will still come back. Paradventure, you will give me space again. You don't deal with stubborn spirits casually. Satan is everything else but a fool. No, he's not a fool. I can tell you that for sure. He's a stubborn spirit. He will come back. I was driven out of your life in January. Let me come and find out. Are you spiritually healthy enough to still keep me far? He's that determined over your life. Are we together? Divine intervention. When God decides to arise over the case of a man. I wish I had time, ladies and gentlemen. My intent is not to teach tonight. Just to give a charge so that we'll pray. But I wish I had the time. I would have shown you three people in the Bible. Who experienced divine intervention. It is a marvelous thing. When God decides to come on your case. An example of such a man was Job. Job's life always gives me joy and hope. I'm not sure I have met any man in my little life who was that devastated like Job. People lose things. But how about a man who lost everything? All he had was God, his wife, and his life. Miserable life, you want to say so. There was nothing glorious in that life. Yet Job said, I will still not give up. I wish we could find that scripture. I don't know if it's in Amos. I, I, I can't remember the exact verse now. That talks about a shepherd that comes to rescue. Just one verse, but it's very powerful. A shepherd that came and ate a sheep. Huh? And all that was left of that sheep was two ears and one, um, one, what? one leg. And yet the shepherd still came and fought. I found that scripture. Bless you. You see why it's good to have good media people? God bless you. 
as the shepherd. Give them a big God bless you. Thank you, my dear people. Thus saith the Lord, as the shepherd taketh out of the mouth of a lion two legs or a piece of ear. What does a shepherd, I mean, the lion has finished everything. How do you eat a sheep such that all that is left is two ears? That word or is actually an, and one leg. A piece of an ear and two legs. My apologies. What do you need to do? Because provided you can hear and you can act, there will be restoration. That, watch this now. This is a very powerful scripture. How do you come and meet? That is a level of devastation. You've eaten everything. Heart, gone. Brain, gone. Head, gone. I'm sure the lion was resting to finish the remaining part. And the shepherd said, even now, come on. Even now. Let this be a prophetic word for someone. Even now. It is not over. That every part of that sheep has been eaten. But provided there are two legs and one ear. What is the ear for? Because faith comes by hearing. Once there is an ear that can hear a prophetic word and there are two legs like two witnesses, you can take steps. There can be mysterious recovery. Hold on. Two legs and one ear. I don't want to speak science, but from a standpoint of science and even molecular genetics there is hope in resuscitating life in those two years than the dry bones in ezekiel 37 they were very dry meaning there's no blood this one they are fresh so science has maneuvered ways they literally even from a scientific standpoint two legs and the shepherd said you don't know me you don't know what i can do there must be restoration and he said bring the one ear bring the two legs <laughs> and he said sheep you may have gone but I use your ear provided you can hear me and the legs I don't know what kind of miracle that is called for someone that's how you came here your business is dead. You only carried one ear, one business ear, and two business legs. Keep them on the ground and watch what the power of God can do. Do you believe what I'm telling you? Because when you say divine intervention, I'm stretching your faith. My God, I wish I have the liberty to share with you some of my testimonies. If you don't believe God lives, think again. If you don't believe God restores, think again. If you don't believe God opens the book of remembrance, think again. My dear sister, who told you God cannot raise help for you? You have been begging around. Men don't help you because they want to. There is a force that compels remembrance. This is true for businesses. You are a contractor here and nothing is working. Just keep your tools on the ground home and say, Lord, I throw it before you like the rod of Moses. Let his presence rest on it. Then it becomes the rod of God, the business of God, the church of God, the ministry of God. He says, take up that rod where it thou shalt walk signs and wonders. Let me tell you what we do with things that don't work. We don't throw them. We cast them before God. Everything, learn the lesson from the woman with the alabaster box. The moment anything in your life is not working, don't throw it. If you throw it, you waste it. Learn the lesson from this simple story. Your marriage that is not working, your job that is not working, look at me please. Your destiny that is not working, your ministry that is not working, you came to Koinonia tonight. Don't just throw it, your hands will be empty. Carry it and bring it before your maker. I hear you are a restorer. Here it is. Restore my destiny. No job, no dignity. Everybody looks at me and it's like there is an embargo upon my head. I travel to Lagos, the same embargo follows me. I come to Abuja, the same embargo. I went to US, followed me. Canada followed me, everywhere followed me. The issue is not location. You need to tear off that veil. When Jesus died, one of the immediate responses to his death was the tearing of the veil. 
there are veils that cover things and the bible says it tore from top to bottom top to bottom are you learning tonight i'm looking at people here tonight who have all kinds of issues within their lives some of you whilst you are seated here you are just crying and saying lord please step in for me i'm tired of this situation it has mocked god too many times in my family and my life please i want you to release your faith the god of heaven wants to step in for you step in for you i heard about a lady you know this ministry is like medicine you meet all kinds of situations i heard about a lady her wedding was dissolved the night to the wedding true story the night not one week night that the next day you have paid cake paid decoration that night the wedding dissolved i told you about the one that got married and there was no thanksgiving the next day because the people fought over a silly petty thing and that was the end of it don't tell me that is natural it's a lie huh how about those you got an email congratulations you have been given a managerial job you even testified in church and you went back and then you get another email and they say sorry it was a mistake you had a similar name with somebody what kind of thing is that a similar name how about somebody who becomes arrested and they say we are looking for a criminal and two of your names match so you come you answer questions first if you are innocent you will go but at least you are arrested or because your face looks like a criminal ladies and gentlemen our world is not all scientific get used to this i'm not just priming your mind to always think satan satan no that's not the idea but it's just opening you up to a reality that if you ignore this you will pay for it victory has been given to us in christ but not administered in ignorance you must know who god is and understand the spiritual arsenals that have been given to you this is what brings you victory why are we here tonight to see the god of intervention arise for us why are we here tonight to give us a chance to experience the power of god so that we can stand before his people and declare to the nations that god is real it is true he can come through for men it is true he can change the stories of families it is true he can heal every testimony you're going to be hearing here tonight i want you to know whether testimonies of healings testimonies of breakthroughs some of the deliverances that have happened to god's people please look up let me tell you this look beyond joshua selman and look beyond koinonia we're in a business that is beyond showcasing ourselves no that is at all not the agenda it will be a total waste of your time and an insult to your intelligence if all we are doing here is just marketing ourselves there are people whose problems are too too serious for the marketing of flesh for someone is seated here with a, a death sentence maybe cancer this cancer thing again or some kind of demonic thing how do you ignore that situation and all you want is to be seen now my charge for you as we pray is please give your destiny a chance to experience the god of intervention if you are here for the first time and you are used to doubting preachers and doubting the power of God, let me advise you. Why don't you just shelve that? And give God a chance. Give God a chance and watch what He can do. Give God a chance. Apostle, but I don't believe miracles are real. No problem. It's all right. I understand your situation. But why don't you just give God a chance? Apostle, the situation in my family, there is no ear and there is no leg. Go back to the God who created from nothing. He's still alive. He does not need an ear and a leg. It's only an advantage. Even from nothing in his world and in his realm, nothing is a raw material. He can create anything from nothing.